Hey everyone, welcome back to the Movie Couple channel. I'm Wendy and here is my non-spoiler review for Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins. Snake Eyes is directed by Robert Schwenkti and stars Henry Golding as Snake Eyes, who is welcomed into the Arashikage clan after saving the life of their heir apparent. But his honor and allegiance will be tested as secrets from his past are revealed. Before we get started with this review, you're gonna wonder why there isn't two of us. Where is Dustin? Dustin, unfortunately, was not able to come with me to the screening, so I am doing this one by myself. However, if we do a spoiler review, then he will definitely be in that so he can give you guys his thoughts on the movie as well. Now let's jump into this non-spoiler review. If you guys can remember from our trailer reactions, we were pretty excited for this movie. I mean, the action looked fantastic. I really enjoy seeing Henry Golding's career and his performances, so I was very curious on his take on Snake Eyes and also on how they were going to sort of show us this iteration of Snake Eyes origin. Now I say that is because um, for especially some of you long time G.I. Joe fans out there, um, it's been said in various interviews by both the director and the actors that the this origin is not going to be the same as the comics. Uh, I believe it was said that they were going to be taking some creative freedom. So I do want you guys to all know that going in that if you're thinking you're going to see the same storyline and origin that was played out in the comics. Uh, I don't think you're going to be getting that in this film. However, for uh, as a viewer going in knowing that, I felt okay and I, I kind of went in with an open mind to see a fresh take on the origin of Snake Eyes. And as you can tell from the trailer, Snake Eyes does speak in this film. At first, I was a little put off and I thought, how are they going to make this iconic character who was known for being a silent character speak throughout the entire movie? But then, you know, watching various interviews and reading various articles, it kind of makes sense for them to have him speak in the movie because it is an origin of Snake Eyes, so we can kind of follow his story and path to where we get to he becomes a silent character for future films. If you guys are worried about Snake Eyes speaking in the film, don't worry. Uh, he does speak in the film, as we know, but he is still a man of few words, so he's not having like a 10 minute monologue or dialogue with anyone, so just keep that in mind. With that said, I really didn't mind this fresh take on the origins. Yes, it is very different from the comics. And also, yes, we have kind of already known about it from various interviews and articles. So with all that said, this movie shows us how Snake Eyes meets up with Storm Shadow, essentially by saving his life and then Storm Shadow taking him back to Japan to kind of introduce him to his clan, the Arashikage. And essentially offering Snake Eyes a place where he can call home, which is something that Snake Eyes, you know, as a kid, really didn't have. He really never felt like he belonged he always felt like he was an outsider. So you can kind of see the bond forming between Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow right there and then. I really enjoy seeing the relationship blossom between Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, especially knowing how their story is supposed to play out later on in the story in the future in, uh, in G.I. Joe's. I will also say that I absolutely love Andrew Koji's take on Storm Shadow. If you don't already know, I am a huge fan. I love him in Warrior and I was really, really excited that he was a part of this film. The story actually filled with quite a few plot twists that I actually didn't see coming, which I kind of liked. However, the way they told it felt kind of rushed, felt kind of convoluted, left a few plot holes that I can't get into in a non-spoiler review, but it left me feeling a little unsatisfied. I also want to get into the action. So in the trailer, they showed us a lot of kick-ass action sequences. However, in the movie, I was pretty let down because Almost all the fight scenes or stunt scenes that they had was muddled with shaky cam. The framing was way too close up. I would have liked to see some of these fight scenes play out in a wider angle. Not everything has to be, you know, right here on the actors. Um, especially when you have someone like Andrew Koji uh, playing Storm Shadow. When you have someone like Iko Uwais playing Hardmaster. I felt like a lot of their um, stunt scenes didn't really highlight their physical capabilities, their awesome martial arts skills, and I wish we would have seen more of that. And honestly, the way it was edited, it was just, I felt like it was so cut down that it didn't really get to play out to its full potential. Scarlet and the Baroness are also featured in this film, but it was very little. And overall, this film is really, yes, it is the first of what it seems like it may be leading into a whole slew of G.I. Joe origin films and hopefully later on into a G.I. Joe ensemble film. But I, once I saw the interaction between Scarlet and uh, Baroness and basically everybody else in the cast, I sort of longed to see that ensemble film. And I really do feel like Scarlet and Baroness were 
pretty underutilized in this movie. This film is definitely a setup for all the future films, and when I say setup, I mean this is the tip of the iceberg, and you guys will know what I'm talking about once you've seen the film. I don't want to give too much away because it is a non-spoiler, but let's just say things are not really quite resolved. Like, you kind of, I honestly, secretly hoping that we do get another one just so I can see it play out. And also I would love to see more of Andrew Koji as Storm Shadow. Let's go ahead and get into the rating for this movie. I'm going to give this film a stream it. Uh, the action was a bit of a letdown. There was a lot and I really felt like they could have let it play out more instead of using the shaky ham and the close-up shots for these action scenes. I also didn't feel like every single fight needed to be like a 1 versus 10, 1 versus 15 sort of a fight. I would have liked to see more of the intricate one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one fights. I didn't mind the fresh take on Snake Eyes origin but I felt like the story that they were trying to tell was really convoluted. They were trying to tell a lot to the audience, yet also nothing at the same time. There you have it, that is my non-spoiler review for Snake Eyes, the G.I. Joe Origins. If you've seen the movie, please comment your thoughts below and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next.